You might have heard of a particularly dangerous adrenaline-charged craze that was sweeping the UK in a northern hemisphere summer called tombstoning. It is so called because at least 12 of its advocates are dead. It comprises of mainly young and crazy men and possibly women jumping from cliffs at great heights into an often churning sea below. Whilst undoubtedly the participants of this hazardous pastime are possible future recipients of the Darwin Award, one of their members' somewhat perilous activities has drawn international attention, due in part to a rather spectacular photograph that was taken. Photographer Alastair Sopp says he just chanced upon the man jumping and took what is a quite stunning image. But how did he do it? Well, the picture is clearly captioned as a composite photograph, which means that the photographer essentially did a cut and paste of the moving figure from each frame he shot onto the master frame. Yet how did he achieve such a perfect alignment of the leap to the background? Simply by using a photographic tripod. Tripods serve to stabilise a camera when a camera movement is undesirable in the final photograph. Camera shake can occur when a camera is handheld in low light and slow shutter speeds are necessary to capture a correct exposure. And everyone has seen those landscape photographs where the horizon line has taken on a completely new aspect like that seen by a drunken sailor. Correctly aligning a photograph to create the best composition possible can often be a far harder task than is imaginable for someone whose hands may not be the strongest and steadiest. If you are interested in still life and landscape photography, then a tripod is one of those essential pieces of equipment that you must always have in hand. Even if you have a grip like steel, anyone that has stood for even a couple of minutes with a camera in their hands waiting for the sun to set knows how painful it can be. Tripods are essential for anyone that is thinking of shooting in low light situations or action based subject matter. A variation on the tripod is a monopod, which as the name suggests, has only one leg. You will often find that sports photographers carry their cameras around by the lens. A monopod attaches the lens, rather than the camera body, to take the weight of the lens. It is a more manoeuvrable option than a tripod and is considerably more lightweight. When a sports photographer pans to follow the centre of the action, as it goes past, he can use the lens as a pivot point. Sop, in this instance our intrepid photographer, must have had his camera mounted on a tripod in readiness for a spectacular sunset shot when this tombstoner appeared out of the ether and dropped off the edge of the cliff in front of him. And while this may seem suspiciously fortuitous, Sop certainly took advantage of the situation. Since the camera was already mounted on a tripod, Sop probably simply hit the trigger button and recorded multiple exposures of the tombstoner falling to the sea below. Most good tripods have interchangeable heads or the instrument that attaches the camera to the actual stand. These tend to move in three directions, up and down, left and right, and a lateral tilt, and can be locked into a stable position in any combination of these movements. Tripods can also be fitted with fluid heads, which are essential for videography. These heads move smoothly through a variety of movements and prevent movement becoming jerky in moving footage. Of course, the other vital piece of the equipment that has been used to create Mr Sop's picture is a fast camera body. The camera he has used must have been capable of firing at least five frames per second for a two to three second burst at quite a high shutter speed. This is evident from the lack of blur on the moving body. While many compact cameras now have very good continuous shooting rates, I would suspect that this was a picture created by a prosumer style DSLR. With a few good exposures and a decent software program, SOP simply stitched the photos together by using software like Adobe Photoshop Photo Merge or the freeware program Hugin and created a very compelling image. So what else went into the creation of this photograph? Well, photographer Alastair Sop would have you believe a whole lot of luck. But then we all believe in fairy stories as well, don't we? Until next time, happy snapping.